My hardcore Iron Man has over 5,000 hours of playtime, but logging onto the account means instant and certain death. How did I end up in this predicament, and what's my plan? Introducing Seven Nasty Cloak. Hello there. He's an old school RuneScape hardcore Iron Man, which means he only has one life, and he stands alone. Oh no! Unlike most hardcores in the game who shy away of dangerous tasks, Seven Nasty Cloak embraces the challenge. When I first created my hardcore, the game recommended the name Seven Nasty Cloak, and I instantly knew that the goal for this new character must be to obtain the most prestigious cape in the game, the Inferno Cape. With the Inferno Cape now secured, we've entered the endgame. The trials that await Seven Nasty Cloak are more treacherous than ever. Any hesitation or mistake could spell the end for the cloak. The stakes are undeniably high, but the prospect of claiming some of the most sought after rewards makes it all worth it. <gasps> oh my god! This is the Iron Man Odyssey, Hardcore Iron Man Edition. I feel like this is where we're gonna struggle most in the raid. So like, Pokemon have weaknesses, so do RuneScape bosses. Zabak is super effective against Rune Crossbows. There's another one coming! Ah! Don't worry, this is a warm-up. C come over here, come over here, come over here. Taylor, get over here! <laughs> Dude, and also, when you got the rune crossbow, you gotta show off your shield. Why would you why would you even want to use a blowpipe? You take you take the Norse. Oh wait. Um Okay, I'm gonna try and hit this uh Oh um, Protect Mage. Protect Mage! And then I'll give you... I'll give you these two brews. You can pick them up. Feels good not having to use the bronze pickaxe again. Okay. I'm just gonna go in here. You can go in whenever you want. No rush. Okay, now let's attack this blue one down here. Black, red. White. Back to red. Red, 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 red. It's hard to adjust once you screw up. Ooh. I might not make this DPS check. I gotta concentrate for a second. I'm coming to you. Wait, are you still there? Taylor, I need you to teleport crystal me out. Wait. It, it won't let you teleport crystal me out? Bro, keep trying, keep trying. Oh, I can't log in. I'll, I die if I log in. And I don't know how much membership I have. For the next month, Seven Nasty Cloak will be trapped in hardcore Iron Man purgatory. Through no fault of my own, I'm locked out. Despite showing as alive on the high scores, there's a lethal twist lurking in the tombs of a masket in the Theater of Blood. Enter the insta-kill mechanic, a harsh reality for hardcore Iron Man. Every logout within these raids spells certain doom, whether mid-puzzle or in between rooms. But there's a loophole, letting membership lapse to teleport from a membership to a non-membership area, bypassing this deadly fate. If I wait till my membership completely expires, my character will register in Lumbridge instead of inside of the raid, effectively removing me from the dangerous situation. Whether it was a Jagex server hiccup or my internet going out for just one second, the result is the same. One click of the login button spells the end for Seven Nasty Cloak. Despite my efforts with Jagex's support team and also contacting Jagex on Twitter, the only solution is to wait out the membership expiration to maintain the hardcore status. So what's the plan if I can't log in for more than a month? Enter Baby Cloak, the next hardcore in line. But I'm not just starting from scratch. I'll be leveraging my hardcore expertise to raise the stakes. It's your turn, Baby Cloak, to enter the world of Gilanor. Baby Cloak will dive headfirst into the wilderness, facing some of the most perilous challenges right from the start. Baby Cloak will get the coveted Void Waker, or Die Trying.
How will I kick off this account differently from the usual hardcore approach? Well, I'm diving headfirst into the wilderness with minimal hit points. Most creatures out there could eliminate me in a single blow. While most hardcore Ironmen prioritize boosting their hit points and defense for survival, Baby Cloak is taking a different route. I'm keeping defense at level 1 and intentionally keeping HP as low as possible to maintain a lower combat level. steadfast in the face of challenges. Go forth with strength and determination, for greatness awaits those who dare to pursue it. Embarking on my old school RuneScape hardcore Iron Man journey, Lumbridge became my starting point, as it does for many adventurers. As I hadn't been given the option to choose a name during Tutorial Island, swiftly remedying this, I decided to bond up my account, opting for a more fitting name, Baby Cloak. Contemplating the idea of starting a fresh account to showcase a more comprehensive hardcore journey, I realized that there are exhilarating moments ahead. There's also a staggering amount of grinding required before even contemplating boss battles. The early stages can feel somewhat tedious, especially with the constant struggle of low run energy. As an Iron Man, access to stamina potions or even energy potions is limited until significant progress is made in herb lore. My first order of business was to boost my agility, starting at the Gnome Agility course to raise my level to 10, afterwards moving to the Drainer Village course. After completing about 15 laps there, I transitioned to the Alcarid rooftop course, where I spent the next hour running in circles. That in turn allowed me to access the Varrock course. Initially aiming for 40 agility to access the course in Mauritania, exhaustion eventually caught up with me, prompting a well-deserved break. The following day, I prioritized securing some funds to purchase fire strikes. Venturing to Barbarian Village with my humble 10 HP, I completed the stronghold of security, earning a tidy 10,000 gold pieces. With this newfound wealth, I procured around a thousand magic strikes. However, being only level 1 in magic posed a slight hiccup, which I quickly resolved by dispatching some rats until my magic level reached level 13, allowing me to cast Fire Strike. Contemplating my future endeavors, I pondered the prospect of attaining 43 prayer. Sensing an opportune moment with my combat level still relatively low, I ventured to the Lava Dragons, where I could collect bones without much risk of attack. Several hours spent there yielded a significant portion of the bones required for overhead prayers.
Lava Dragons proved to be a prudent choice for a brand new account. Luck was on my side as I managed to secure a Rune Fullhelm drop, providing the additional GP to continue my Fire Strike escapade. Recognizing the importance of safety precautions on a hardcore account, I set my sights on obtaining a one-click teleport item. The Ardoin Easy Cape seemed like a fitting first goal, serving both as my best cape for the time being and a reliable means of a one-click teleport. Setting off on a questing spree, I tackled Rune Mysteries and commenced the Plague City quest. With these prerequisites in place and knocking out the biohazard quest, completing the Ardoin Easy Diaries was a breeze. Despite being at the infant stage of my journey, I knew I had to acclimate to danger early on, as Baby Cloak would embark on a daring expedition to the Revenant Caves in search of coveted treasures. Gaining access to the caves requires a hefty fee of 100,000 gold pieces, no small feat for a brand new account. Determined to raise the necessary funds, I ventured into the wilderness to collect steel plate legs, which I could then sell in Alcarid for 650 gold coins each. With approximately 200 plate legs to exchange, I quickly amassed the required funds and made my way to Edgeville to grab a skull and face the perilous challenges that awaited me in the Rev Caves. Unfold, turns a mass cut, stories of old. If fear knows blaze, I'll be in the bright one life, danger is an advent.